morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. So I want to start off today by saying that the comments section is not a place for theologians to, to contend. And if you, if you want to ask me a question, it's a sincere question, you're not sure that something I'm saying on this channel is correct, feel free to write to me via email and I'd be happy to answer you. But people who want to see the truth of God's word and use theology to dispute it, you will not find an audience here. So there was a comment that I received this morning when I awoke on my channel on one of the videos that I made about the, the Christian head cover. And a woman had left a comment that was simply a scripture that was quoted as if that made a point that was contrary to what the scripture says. And she also, after that, left a comment uh, using kind of Facebook lingo. So it was the ling lingo um, SMH. So I didn't know what that means. I had to look it up. But it means shaking my head. So what she was expressing in, in this by putting the scripture there was not a question. She was making a point, as theologians do, by taking a little tiny snippet of scripture out of context and using that as a way to attack the entirety of God's word, the truth of God's word. And in particular, in this instance, it was used to say that a, a, a Christian woman's head covering is the Holy Spirit which is not the case, and I want to go over this. For those of you who are sincerely trying to seek the Lord and understand the truth, they might come up against this. So the comment was deleted, as all such comments are. And while if someone wants to post a scripture in the comment section, they're welcome to do so, because the scripture is the scripture. In this particular instance, it was done to contend. And there are other ways this can happen. For example, if I've testified on this channel many times that there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, and that there is no Trinity. And someone might quote 1 John 5, 7, as if that proves there is a Trinity when it doesn't. But this kind of scripture contest is something that I do not allow it to take place in the comment section. So please don't engage in it. You're just wasting your time. However, th this does need to be answered because those of you who are young in the faith might see something like that, and you might have seen that, and think that this woman made a point. And I want to begin from the scripture and, and talk first about theology and this practice, and then I want to answer this particular contention. So if we go to Isaiah 28, Isaiah 28, let's read here about theology. Let's start in um, verse 13. But the word of the Lord, so what's the word of the Lord? This is the word of the Lord. This is the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And so unto theologians, the word of the Lord is thus. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. This particular verse in scripture describes the practice of theology or one of the practices of them. So theologians like to present you with a single verse, and around that verse, they will construct a lie in order to deceive you and ensnare you. Now, when we go to 1 Corinthians 11, which is the passage of the Bible that the contention was placed on. So I had done a video about 1 Corinthians 11. I've done many. So here we read in, in the scripture, 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. 
for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Now, there's many videos on this channel about the head covering. We can understand that the head covering is a physical object that is placed over a woman's glory, her hair, in order to conceal it and in order to protect her. If you have questions about that, please ask me and I will give you a link. It's in a recent video that I did on this topic. So a woman covers her beautiful hair, her glory, that was given unto her for her husband, both to honor God, because God requires it, and if she doesn't do so, she's dishonoring her husband, Jesus Christ, and our Heavenly Father, God. So a woman who prays or prophesies uncovered, she is dishonoring God, Jesus Christ, and her husband by doing so, by making her beauty the, the thing that everyone is thinking about. And I have done many videos about this. This is an actual physical thing. This particular passage of the Bible is talking about what are gender differences between men and women, that men don't cover their head when they pray or prophesy. In other words, they remove their hat. And a woman prays or prophesies with her head covered, and that means her hair because that is the part of the head that is her glory. And throughout the scripture, a woman's beautiful hair is described as her glory. That is what needs to be covered. And the word cover means to conceal. It also means to protect. So when a woman wears a veil, it protects her from the attention of fallen angels and devils. And this is something that a lot of women don't want to be obedient about this, and they turn to theology in order to make excuse. Now, this was not uh, an argument that I had heard before, but I've heard it now, and so we're going to answer this from the Holy Word of God. So let's go to Isaiah 30 and verse 1 and read the scripture, the little snippet of scripture that was used by this woman to defend uh, with, with some, I might say, with it, some exasperation. So she was saying um, that she was shaking her head, that it was even necessary to have to answer this, as if she's contemptuous of the word of God. So she's shaking her head, and I, I'm sorry she's feeling that way. It's inappropriate to feel that way, and I'm going to show you why. So in Isaiah 30, verse 1, this is the scripture she quoted. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So in quoting this particular scripture, what this woman is intimating, so she's implying that, that the counsel from God's word that commands that a woman cover her head when she pray or prophesy, and if she doesn't do so, She's dishonoring her husband, the Lord Jesus Christ, and God. So the implication in leaving this particular verse in that manner is to say that someone who's telling people from the word of God what the word of God says, that they are telling people that woe be unto them, woe be unto them, and, and that to cover with any other covering other than the Holy Spirit adds sin to sin. Well, this is very grievous and it's verily false. And we can understand what is meant by this particular passage when we read it in context. When we read the next verse, we can see what is meant here. So I want to begin in verse one and read verse two so we can understand this in context. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that go, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Here we can see that what the scripture is talking about is people 
who don't take the counsel of the Lord and they seek from men counsel. They seek the wisdom of men. So woe unto those who do that. And where do we find the counsel of the Lord? In his word. What is the spirit of the Lord? How can we find the spirit of the Lord? Let's go to, hold your place in Isaiah. Let's go to John chapter 6. And let's read here verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the covering of the spirit that is referred to in Isaiah 30 verse 1 is speaking about the spirit and life that is found in God's word. Let's read this again. Woe to the rebellious children. So these are people who claim to be religious, but don't want to obey God's commandments. They're rebellious. So woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel. So they hear theological explanations. They, they hear advice about how it is that we act as Christians that take counsel, but not of me. So where do we find counsel from the Lord? In his word. There's no other place to find the counsel of God. As a matter of fact, if you take counsel from someone, something that contradicts what the word of the Lord says, what are you doing? You're returning to the ways of Egypt. You're going back to the house of bondage. When we understand it, Egypt in the Old Testament, that was where ancient Israel was in captivity. They were in bondage, slave, slaves in Egypt. And when they wanted to return to Egypt, they wanted the comforts and reassurances and the false gods and the, the false ways of worshiping that were in Egypt, such as bowing before a golden calf, for example, for example. So rebellious children that take counsel, so they take advice, but not of me. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. What is that spirit? The spirit of God is found in his word. The words that I speak, saith Jesus Christ, they are spirit and they are life. And this is a prime example of a theologian using a little snippet of scripture to deny what the word of God says, to say, oh, you don't have to cover your head. You don't have to cover your head. The Holy Spirit is your covering. So I want to uh, read a little bit further here now in Isaiah 30. Let's read verse three. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. When people turn to theology to make excuse for sin, in this case, it being the sin of rebellion against God's word, when a woman it refuses to humble herself and cover her glory in company with other people besides her husband, when she refuses to do that and turns to theology to explain why she's turning to Egypt, she's turning to the wisdom of men to make excuse for her iniquity. When she does this, she will become blind. She will become, as the word says here, confused. Now I want to read just a little bit um, further in the same chapter, because we want to read the context of any scripture. So for example, when we're reading in 1 Corinthians 11, we can see it's talking about women covering their heads, men not covering their heads, why this is the case, and also why women wear their hair long and why men wear their hair short. That is what is written of in 1 Corinthians 11. And it's very clearly 
laid out that people who don't hold to these ordinances that are commanded to all the churches, not just the Corinthians, and you can see that if you read the beginning of 1 Corinthians, you will see that this is not just written to one particular church, it's written to all of God's people. That this is clearly laid out so that we know how to conduct ourselves as Christians. And it's clearly commanded, it's not about the Holy Spirit. It's not about the covering. There is no covering of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given unto us so we have the ability to overcome sin, to overcome our flesh, and to be witnesses to the world about the truth of Jesus Christ. Our sins are covered when we're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. So our sins are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ when we are baptized in his name. And being covered in the waters of baptism is what covers our sin. That is how sin is remitted. The Holy Spirit is there so that thereafter we can have victory by the Spirit of God that dwells in us. It, the Holy Spirit is not given to a woman to cover her head. And to say so is absurd, because if that were true, then how would a man uncover his head when he prays and prophesies? You see, these kinds of things are confusion, and they're, they're absurd and somewhat ridiculous, but they need to be answered from the scripture because these days one of the things i perceive to be one of the biggest contentions one of the things the enemy has the biggest problem with is women being obedient to the scripture about covering their head you would think it's, it wouldn't be that big of a deal but it verily is a big deal so now i want to read in verse 9 of isaiah 30 what God has to say about rebellious people. That this is a rebellious people, lying, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, things prophesy deceits so when a theologian comes along and gives you one little snippet of scripture as if they've made a point my sisters as in this case there are many instances of this what we as christians do is we we take that before the lord in prayer we read the bible with that passage in context so we can have the understanding knowing that the the scripture is given to us. It's inspired by God. It's perfect. It does not contradict itself. So if there seems to be a contradiction, we don't go to theology to explain it away. So a theologian might see a contradiction here and then say, well, 1 Corinthians 11 was just for the Corinthian women. And it wasn't just for the Corinthian women. It was for the church uh, the body of Christ as a whole. And it wasn't just pertaining to women, it was pertaining to men too. And it was talking about how we dress ourselves and how how we conduct ourselves, the, the gender differences that these days have become so very confusing for people. So people these days don't understand that men and women are different, that the biology of a woman has made her to be a suitable servant for her husband. God made women to be servants in a family, to bear children, to be uh, a beautiful partner in, in the marriage bed for their husband, to be a delightful companion to him, to be an intelligent and thoughtful and sympathetic companion to their husband. And the husband was made to be the protector and provider of the woman, the same way Jesus Christ is the protector and provider of the church. And when a woman tries to be something that God didn't ordain her to be, what we end up with is abomination and confusion. When we want to be obedient to God, 
we understand that there's one way to know how to do that, and that is to read his word and do it. And there are people who read the word and don't want to do it, or they don't read the word and they don't want to do it. And they listen to pastors who are lying pastors and prophets who are false prophets, who prophesy unto them deceits and lies, who, who prophesy smooth things and say, oh, you know, your beauty, God gave you your beauty. Why would he want you to hide that? Well, you know what that is? That's a serpent whispering in your ear because when your beauty is exposed when your beautiful hair is out and you are walking around in that condition in front of the world in front of other men in front of brothers and sisters in the lord in front of your own children what you are doing is you're dishonoring god because you are making your beauty the only thing that anybody can think about or in some cases talk about this is the vanity of women, and women have a hard time with this in this our time, particularly, because we've been encouraged to, to indulge our vanity. We've been encouraged to think that, that we just can't help being beautiful, which is true. We can't help that, but we can cover ourselves. And the Bible is very clear that godly women dress in modest apparel, and they don't seek to draw attention to their flesh and they cover themselves so that so that the word of god can be spoken about and listened to and practiced without distraction and without people being tempted to commit adultery and fornication jesus said that he that looketh upon a woman with lust in his heart hath committed adultery with her already in his heart and women who refuse to dress modestly who refuse to keep themselves in the proper order by obeying god's word they're disobedient children and they they're using their misusing their beauty in order to have power and control to make themselves the center of attention we don't want to do these things my sisters i know it's not easy to dress modestly in a world that that believes that to be some kind of oppression and they shake their heads at us they're contemptuous of us but we recognize that this is just the way it is and they um, hated our lord jesus before us and verily they will hate us also so let's turn finally now to isaiah Book of Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Christians hold to the word of God and they don't twist the word of God to deny the word of God. Rather, we read the word of God to understand the word of God. If we come up against something that we don't understand or that seems contradictory, that is an invitation by the Holy Spirit to get into the word of God until it is revealed to us. So the Holy Spirit is not your covering. Your husband is not your covering. Your pastor is not your covering. My sisters, the head covering is a piece of fabric placed on your head to conceal your glory from lustful men, from men that aren't lustful but might become so because of your disobedience, from, from other women who might become envious or competitive with you, it's there to protect the flock from contentions and strivings and envyings and lustings taking place. It's to exemplify to the world how a Christian woman conducts herself towards men. So she's modest around men because the church of Jesus Christ is pictured by a godly woman. And a godly woman is not trying to entice everyone besides her Lord, to lust after her. 
there are some things that are meant to be kept private. As godly women, when we cover our head, we are exemplifying what a Christian is. And we don't play games with that because it's not a game. And we don't twist the scripture to make excuse for why we're going to behave in a way to make our beauty the biggest thing in the world. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be the biggest thing in the world. Because for a Christian, what's most important is that we please our Lord. And if the scripture says that something that we might do something that would dishonor our Lord, then we certainly do not want to play games with that. So I hope I have clarified this for you. Please forgive me if I'm a little bit indignant about this, but verily it's um, very sad when I see women who have been hoodwinked by the devil into thinking that they, they, they know and God's word doesn't, and they use the word of God to make excuse for their disobedience. So they've said unto their false lying pastors and to their false lying prophets, don't tell me the word of God. Don't tell me what I need to obey. Rather, prophesy unto me smooth things. Woe unto them, woe unto them that call evil good. May the word of God go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.